Hi, and welcome to this number fund training. We're going to be looking at the use of bar model in lower key stage two. Now, when I first met bar model, I thought, this is brilliant, what a fantastic tool. And then I got a bit confused because different people were laying out bars in different ways, even for the same problem. So that led me to going back to Singaporean text. So here's some of the ones that I looked at. In fact, this book is brilliant. I really, really like this one. Um, but all of them are really, really helpful. And that, those, have helped, those books have helped me get my brain around the Singapore bar model approach. And that also led to the creation of our visual bar model policy. So this is the, a printout of it. It's a significant PDF document that has both the theory and then loads of examples of bar model being used using the Singapore bar model approach that's been such a success in Singapore. So let's dive in and check out our training today. So let's take a look at our aims then. We want to explore the use of bar model in lower key stage two. We need to understand what is bar model. We need to explore the mathematical foundations for bar model. And that will mean we need to take a look at foundation stage and key stage one use of bar model. We need to understand what the different types of bar models are. And there's definitely more than one. And we also need to understand how bar model helps children confidently solve word problems. Bar modeling fits in with the CPA approach. Bruner suggested in the 60s that children need three representations or three steps to help them develop conceptual understanding of a mathematical concept. They need concrete resources, pictorial representations of those concrete resources to help them really understand what's going on in the abstract. He suggested inactive, iconic and symbolic. So those are the names he used. Bar model definitely fits in with this approach. And in Singapore, in the 80s, when Singapore was at the bottom of the international scales, they looked to the West and thought, oh, Bruner's theory, great idea. And they adopted CPA as their key pedagogic approach. And as part of this, they developed the bar model approach. So how does bar model fit in? Well, in foundation stage, it's very much to do with concrete resources. And even in year one, we're using concrete resources like cubes. And then it, when we get to year two, we begin to use the pictorial representations for bar modeling. Here's a challenge for you to have a go at, a simple word problem about Sarah and her pizzas. So Sarah had 12 pizzas in the freezer. She used five of these pizzas for a party. How many were left in the freezer? So here's some pizzas to inspire you. Can I suggest that you pause the video now and have a go at drawing a bar model for that problem? And when you've had a go, play the video again. I wonder how you got on. Well, we'll come back to Sarah and her pizzas in a minute. As a teacher, I've used bars for many, many years, but not in the context of Singapore bar modeling. So I've used bars as part of a bar chart. And equally, when I'm doing fractions, a fraction wall is just full of bars. So it's not as though as a teacher, I'm unused to using bars. But I would say this isn't the Singapore bar, approach, bar model approach. Let's take a look at the BBC website. These are the statistics or the bars that are used with the statistics for a football match. Which team do you reckon won the game? What could you tell about the game from the bars that you can see on the screen? OK, let's take a look, shall we? Well, those are the statistics. In fact, we've got possession. The top main bar, it's actually the game between Colchester United, which is my favourite team, and Tottenham Hotspur. So Colchester had a quarter of the possession, 25%, and Tottenham had 75%. That sort of makes sense, doesn't it? And the bars are in proportion there. I'm not sure about the third bar down. Shots on target, because Colchester, <laughs> we didn't have any, and Tottenham had four. Does it really work having a bit of the bar for zero? Well, 
this is a use of bars. So actually what happened in the game was that Colchester United and Tottenham drew nil-nil and amazingly my little team won on penalties. So we got we got through to next round. Let's take a look at the next round statistics. This was against Crawley Town and we managed to win away. We had just slightly more of the possession than Crawley. You could tell that without actually seeing the 46% and the 54%, couldn't you? Because the bars are communicating information, which is what they do in the Singapore bar model approach. Well, we won that game. And you know what was really amazing? We ended up being drawn against Manchester United, which was brilliant. Great for my little team. So here are the statistics of that game. I wonder, can you tell which team was at home and which team was away? What do you reckon happened in the game? Well, yes, you're right. Manchester United were at home and Colchester United were away. Well, we had slightly more possession in this game, didn't we, than we did against Tottenham Hotspur. We certainly committed more fouls. We had some, shot, some shots on target this time. Well, the end, game ended 3-0 to Manchester United. They were better than us, obviously. But here's some proof. Tim and I, my son and I, we were there at that game. So this is a use of bars, but it's not the Singapore bar model approach. So let's go back to Sarah and her pizzas. She had 12 pizzas in the freezer and five were used for a party. How many were left in the freezer? Well, it's definitely a 12 subtract 5 equals 7 story, isn't it? That's the subtraction calculation behind it. Now, often when I give teachers and teaching assistants and children this story to draw, they draw this bar model. Sometimes people draw alternative bar models. So <laughs> I've seen the top one. I've seen B. I've seen C. And I've seen other versions as well. In fact, there's been a real lack of clarity about how to draw the bar model for that story. So I'm going to take you to my training cam and show you how I would draw that bar model. OK, I've got Sarah's pizzas here. Let me just check how many I've got. I need 12 for this particular story. So there's a tense frame. And two more, so I don't need those ones. So I've got 12 pizzas. And in this story, <laughs> she starts off with 12. Now we need to be in a bar model format. So I'm going to put them on a line like that. It's got 12 pizzas. We know she uses five in the for her party, doesn't she? So that's one, two, three four, five. And the question is, how many are left? So this is how I'm going to draw my bar model. In fact, that's what that is my version of the bar model already drawn. I had, or Sarah had, 12 pizzas. She's used five of them. And my question is, how many are left? So if I'm going to put this in bars, rather than the pictorial representations I've got here, effectively this would be my bar, these would be my bars. There's the bar to represent the pizzas that are left. And here's the part of the bar to represent the pizzas that have been eaten. Does that make sense? So if I'm using the pizzas, the concrete resource to help me work with it, I'm going to end up with that image. And if by the end of year two, when we get to the place of not having concrete resources there to help us, I will be drawing this as my abstract bar. So out of these options then, well, I suppose the closest is C, isn't it? So let's do that reasoning again. Most people from experience would draw the top set of bars for that story about Sarah's pizzas. This was my idea. There were 12 pizzas. We know that five of them were eaten at the party. How many were left? Well, the trouble with the, this set of bars is that, that actually what's behind that blue bar at the top? 
In fact, this is a key part of bar modelling. Every bar always represents something in the story. Now, if that top bar represents something in the story, it must represent pizzas, mustn't it? In which case, we end up with a lot more pizzas than we actually need. So we don't need that second bar at the top. So they can go away. I'm annotating outside the bars. I'm saying there's 12 pizzas to, all together. Five have been eaten. How many are left? And then we, we put it into the bars. And then we can superimpose color on it. So this is the bar model I would draw. So the top set of bars, well, we are seeing those. In fact, I will call them the relationship model, the relationship model version of bar model, because they're actually showing the relationship between a set of numbers. So 10 is equivalent to 5 add 5. And I've used these a load in, in working with fractions on a fractions wall, as we saw a few minutes ago. We were introduced to this type of bar model from, from the teaching for mastery assessment materials that came out in 2015. So here's a year three example. Write the four number facts for this bar model. So we've got 540, 300 and 240. So the four facts are 300 add 240 equals 540. 240 add 300 equals 540. 540 subtract 300 equals 240. Notice I'm not saying take away because there's no take away going on at all. 540 subtract 240 equals 300. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? In fact, we saw this in the year four example as well. So we've called this relationship model. And this is a slide from our visual bar model policy. We're seeing that 935 is equivalent to 687 add 248. Look at the bar model in the bottom right hand corner. There's only one bar there, but I suppose it's, it's communicating the same information, isn't it? The 935 is 687 add 248. The key to the key is this. The number of relationships are some, sometimes shown in the UK using a set of parallel bars, as we've seen above. But note this single bar layout is used when solving part whole word problems. And it's this word problems idea that is crucial. There's some examples from across the year groups of relationship model in action. But here, this is Bar Barindajit Kerr, one of the leading mathematics thinkers and lecturers and professors in Singapore. She says, as part of the new primary mathematics curriculum, this was in the 1980s, the model method was introduced as a heuristic to help students solve word problems. So bar modeling isn't about abstract relationships. The Singapore bar model approach is about word problems.